The year was 570 and Abraham marched from Yemen towards Mecca with his huge army. He brought a crushing defeat on tribes after tribes who resisted on the way from Yemen to Mecca. Abraham brought elephants and his huge army to destroy the Kaaba, but Allah willed otherwise. Mecca was the center of trade in the Arabian Peninsula. People from all around Arabia had been visiting the Kaaba for centuries to worship. The Abyssinian governor of Yemen, Abraha al Ashram, wanted to divert people and trade from Mecca to Sana'a in Yemen. So Abraha al Ashram constructed a grand place of worship, urging all Arabs to gather there for religious activities. The church built by Abraha was adorned with treasures from Queen Bilqis of Saba. It boasted gold and silver crosses, intricate ebony and ivory pulpits, and an expanded structure. Despite its green structure and lavish decoration, the Arabs devoted to the Kaaba built by Prophet Ibrahim steadfastly refused to abandon their loyalty. They refused to accept the church built by Abraha as Kaaba and a sacred place to worship. The Arabs not only rejected the new side of worship completely but despised it. So much so that an Arab disrespected the worship side by siling the building with stools, provoking Abraha's fury. Abraha was disappointed and angry by seeing his failure to convince the people of Arabia. In retaliation, Abraha vowed to annihilate the Kaaba. Gathering his army, including tamed elephants, used in warfare, he advanced towards Mecca. Abraha defeated all the Arab tribes on his way from Yemen to Mecca. Victorious in his conquest, Abraha enslaved the defeated tribes, seized their belongings, and notably confiscated 200 camels owned by Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim, Prophet Muhammad's grandfather and leader of the Quraysh. While the tribes initially considered opposing Abraha, they ultimately abandoned the idea, recognizing the futility of such a confrontation. In the meantime, Abraha dispatched a messenger to the Quraysh, the custodians of the Kaaba. His message conveyed his sole intention of destroying the sacred house without causing any harm to anyone. Abraha proposed that if the people were averse to conflict, their leader should come forward to meet him. Upon hearing this, Abdul Muttalib, the leader of the Quraysh, responded, By Allah, we have no intention of engaging in a fight. Truly, we cannot afford it. This is the sacred house of Allah and his Khalil, friend Ibrahim alayhi salam. He alone can protect it if he wills to. When Abdul Muttalib was taken to Abraha, his attention was captivated by Abdul Muttalib's dignified and handsome appearance and his impressive personality. Abraha, wanting to show respect without granting an adversary equal status, chose to sit beside Abdul Muttalib on a rich carpet. Through an interpreter, Abraha sought Abdul Muttalib's opinion about the situation. Abdul Muttalib asked compensation for 200 camels taken from him conspicuously avoiding any mention of the impending assault on the Kaaba. Abraha was surprised and shocked when Abdul Muttalib mentioned nothing about Kaaba. When Abraha expressed surprise, Abdul Muttalib calmly stated, I am the master of the camels. Where is the Kaaba? The house of worship has its lord to defend it. In an arrogant assertion, Abraha claimed that none could protect the Kaaba from his impending destruction. In response, Abdul Muttalib steadfastly declared, You are your own. Surprisingly, Abraha then returned Abdul Muttalib's camels. Upon returning home, Abdul Muttalib narrated all his conversation with Abraha to the Quraysh and issued a directive for them to evacuate Mecca and seek refuge in the mountains. Subsequently, Abdul Muttalib, accompanied by some men, approached the Kaaba. Holding the ring of the Kaaba door, he fervently invoked Allah, seeking divine assistance against Abraha and his approaching troops. Abdul Muttalib, along with the entire Quraysh, sought refuge in the mountains, awaiting the unfolding events. The following morning, Abraha, along with his troops and his elephant named Mahmud, prepared to enter Mecca. As Mahmud advanced towards Mecca, Nufail ibn Habib approached the elephant and whispered, Kneel down, Mahmud, and return home safely. You are in Allah's sacred town. Mahmud the elephant obediently kneeled down. Nufail ibn Habib then retreated, climbing up the mountain to a safe distance. 
despite the Abyssinians' efforts to make the elephant stand again, including beating and injuring him, the elephant named Mahmud refused to head towards Mecca. But when he was redirected towards Yemen, he prompted an immediate response. Similarly, the elephant was ready to go to Sham, Syria, but resisted moving towards the Kaaba. Abraha announced that the Kaaba be completely demolished and leveled with ground. In response, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent birds resembling hawks from the seaside. Each bird carried three stones, one in its beak and one in each leg. They flew over till they were directly above the army. Then they screamed and let go of the stones. The stones used to cut up our crack whom they hit from his head to the toes. In addition, Allah the Almighty sent a severe wind that hit the stones and added to their speed and strength the matter that caused the majority of the army to perish. Some Abyssinians fled but did pursue them relentlessly. Simultaneously, a severe wind sent by Allah intensified the speed and impact of the stones leading to the demise of the majority of the Abyssinian army. Abraha also suffered the impact of a stone. Carried by his people, his body began to disintegrate and by the time they reached Sana'a, his chest had cracked, leading to his death. Some Abyssinians who survived managed to return to Yemen. They recounted the events to their people describing the fate that befell them and the entire army. Remember, sharing a good word is a charity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you wherever you are. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.